Hi guys, thanks for tuning in to the Scan Tool Network. In this video, we're taking a closer look at the iCarsoft CR Max tool when hooking up and connected to a Volvo vehicle. So we'll be taking a look uh, at the screens of the tool, what it'll do, what it won't do, and basically, you know, maybe hopefully answering your questions as to, you know, is it any good uh, when working on a Volvo or a Saab vehicle? Now, obviously, Volvo and Saab kind of the, the two go hand in hand because they do kind of use the same software. Um, but obviously, we've only got a Volvo at hand so that you know that's what that's what we're working on right now it's a Volvo C30 from 2008 okay um, but if you are interested in this tool please make sure you use the links in the description below this video because there are fakes there are clones out there they can damage your vehicle and they will damage your vehicle so it's just not worth going down that route okay um, in this vehicle you can see we've got um, an airbag light on we've got an airbag message here on the screen and also a red warning triangle as well. So we're going to use this tool and go through the screens, diagnose, reset that and show you what else it will do. Okay, so first of all, it's a touch screen system. So we've got one end plugged in, uh, one end of this cable plugged into the top here. The other end is plugged into the diagnostic port, which is just down there underneath the steering wheel. And um, what we're going to do first of all is just click into diagnostics. Okay, um, you can see it covers a huge range of manufacturers. And the one we're interested in, obviously, is just clicking on Volvo. So it's then going to go through and ask us if we want to, if we want the tool to find the vehicle for us, or if we want to just select it ourselves. What I'm going to do in this case, and um, we'll go vehicle select, is just to give you an idea of the vehicles that it will cover. Okay, um, you can exclude the 850 and 960 because I'm fairly sure this tool will not cover those vehicles, um, simply because they run uh, different diagnostic systems so these are what we've currently got there we go okay but we're interested in this little c30 that we have right now it's a 2008 model and we just click on this one here it does ask you for a lot of information that you probably might not be aware of um, but we we just found clicking the first options just gets us through in any case uh, But you could look into it more specifically if you wanted right so you, you've then got this screen here where you can do um, A full scan on the vehicle or a full a full scan uh, or you can specifically choose your own control unit I'll come back to that option in a moment. So what we can do is if we click on control unit This is going to give us a list of systems that the tool uh, can sort of potentially connect with depending on what systems are installed to your vehicle what you can assume though is that this tool will allow you to uh diagnose and reset the systems in all of the systems in whatever vehicle it's in. It's classed as an all system scanner uh, so if you've got a sp specific system installed to your vehicle then it will diagnose it and it will find a fault with it uh, if there is one of course. Uh, but in this case let me just have a quick look I'll just show you down the list and depending on which vehicle you're in you'll get a different set of options on this screen I guess this is a 2008 model so it's kind of an older vehicle um, but if you if you're looking at maybe like a 2016 or 2017 model then the chances are this list of systems that you can connect to will be a lot more um, so just to bear that in mind but it will cover all of the systems in whatever vehicle you're in as I say so we are gonna have a quick look first of all we'll have a look at the engine module see if there are any faults with that oh, let's take there's a fault there why is that? Hmm, okay, well, it definitely has got an engine, it's in not fitted, but we'll come back to that. Um, I want to go to, well, we've got an airbag light on. I'll come back to that engine fault, uh, or the the, uh, the message. So we click on the SRS system, and we'll go read fault code. So this is an, is an example of what you'll get if you did have like a warning light or a fault within a specific system. So you get a unique fault code here, then you get a description of the fault here. Um, we found a loose connection underneath the passenger seat, so we're just gonna, we've re, well, we've reconnected that, but this, the codes still remain and the airbag light still remains. If you're not entirely sure what this information means because nobody is born an expert in diagnostics, uh, then what you what you really need to do is just copy this information into a Google search engine. And if somebody, if, if you're getting this fault, somebody else will have had it as well. Well, the answers will all be on Google as to exactly what you need to do 99.9% .9 of the time okay uh, so with that said what we can do with this one is just click on clear fault memory and then we'll click OK to this erasing the fault codes please wait erase operation done the airbag light is still on but it will go off 
generally I think in this car it takes like 10-15 seconds oh there we go it's gone off now to go off so just bear that in mind it's now left us with another fault which says alarm system service required now we do know that um, when this vehicle has just been simply parked up not being used it has um, the alarm has been going off sort of intermittently so it, that is something that we are currently in the midst of investigating um, oh, sorry I've gone wrong bit um, so we need to we need to have a, a further look at this we need to figure out which system it is because it's not obviously like it doesn't say or oh, alarm system or anything like that um, I don't know if now this doesn't have a keyless system does it no so it's going to give you a link error um, trying to figure out which system it would be in Fault code, driving distance incorrect, that doesn't necessarily mean much. Sometimes the ECUs from these vehicles, uh, they can spit out some like faults which just don't really seem to make much sense. Uh, read fault code. So that that could be an issue, that could be the issue that we're, that we're looking at here. Uh, glass brake wire, signal strength too high, um, that could be the reason for the alarm intermittently going off but again no it's like that that there is a fault that we've never seen before so we probably need to go away do a bit more investigative work on that and then come back and try and deal with that and that should sort out the alarm system but uh, we'll we'll come to that as and when as and when we need to okay um, so there was a there was a it wasn't allowing us earlier to uh, to get into the engine system now there is an option on here if you just go to OBD2 I think. Does it still have it on this? Or maybe not. No, I need to look at that as well. Maybe the tool just needs an update because sometimes that can um, be a little bit of an issue as well. Okay, so anyway, <laughs> I'm, I'm digress here. What we're, what we're now going to look at is the service screen. So this, this is really what your garages would generally have access to. Um, sometimes these cars need special things doing to them which are over and above like the code reading and the the scanning for like particular faults so you know things like your service resets opening and closing the calipers steering angle sensors throttle calibrations DPF regenerations battery registrations and you can see this tool does a lot more okay so I'm just gonna scroll through here and these are the kind of service or special functions you can expect from the tool that doesn't necessarily mean though that all of these functions are going to be available for your specific vehicle um, because obviously you know let's say for example you're you're diagnosing a petrol car then DPF is going to be absolutely no use to you because that's a diesel particulate filter regeneration so it all depends on the vehicle you're in and that will sort of ultimately decide what of these special functions will work on your car now what you can do is you can go back to select your vehicle and I'll show you this this time we'll um, we'll ask it to automatically find the vehicle. So instead of going vehicle select, this time we'll go VIN identify and we'll just go read. So it's found the vehicle, click OK and again just click on these first options here. Or maybe that, in fact, that's probably why it wasn't connecting to the engine because I was selecting the wrong option. But in any case, um, we'll click on service here, and then what this will generally do is it'll show you which of those service functions will work on your specific vehicle. Okay? Or it should, in any case, providing. Yeah, providing I've selected the right option, but there we go. So these are some of the special functions that will work on this particular vehicle. Not a great deal because it is an older vehicle, so you know you can understand that. But if you are if you are maybe sitting in like a 2015, 14, 15, 16 vehicle, the list of service functions on this screen would be showing a lot more, obviously. Um, and there we go. So th so those are the main sort of areas of this tool that would be of benefit to you if you were buying this tool for a Volvo maybe you had maybe you had like a couple of cars in your family and you want to you want to take care of all of them um, but yeah I wanted I wanted just to go back into that um, see if you could diagnose an engine fault you see there's lots of different like uh, engine types for this 
I'm not entirely sure which one is the correct one so it's like well I could be here a long time trying to figure out which one it is I have to go and do my homework but that is what's not really allowing us into uh, there we go so that's that's a way in there read fault code you can also go on the view data as well and you can get live data as well so if you look at this screen here this will show you uh, live data as it's happening from the vehicle so it's really good to have if you wanted to know if say like uh, the airflow sensor was reading the correct values or that was reading the way way too high or way too low uh, your sensor it gives you like coolant sensor degrees brake light switch so you can see I've just put my foot on the brake there and it says activated if I take my foot off the brake not activated so it knows exactly what's happening with the vehicle at any given point and it's a really intelligent piece of kit okay so that's it that's that's really just a nutshell of the CR Max as an example of what it can do on a Volvo vehicle. What I can do as well as I'll show you, uh, just do an auto scan. Um, it scrolls through the whole vehicle and it'll find which of the systems from its own list are actually fitted to this vehicle and then from that list you can then go through and diagnose each specific system if you want or you can choose the other option where it just it takes a bit longer though but automatically scans each vehicle, uh, sorry each system for a fault. So that does take a little bit longer than this one but there we go so uh, just this is 72 percent here um while that's while that's sort of finishing up there uh, i will just say again though that if you are if you are interested in this tool um, it's a fantastic package but make sure you use the links in the description below this video because as i say there are fakes there are clones and i've seen them damage vehicles before and it's it's not worth going down that route okay um so it's definitely worth using the link in the description below the video so there we go you can see it's already it's already diagnosed that fault within this session so it knows there's one there but you could go in to say like the ABS system we have got an ABS system fitted and there's no fault code found there thankfully um, where else are we you know we went into this one earlier that's where we found the uh, the glass brake wire signal to high fault And then other systems as well, other smaller systems like driver, door module, no fault code found. Um, let's have a look at actually, just have a look at passenger door module as well. Um, because what you can do is like actuation tests. So if you've got a problem with like say, you set, say for example the windows not going down on a passenger side, uh, you might not necessarily know if it's the switch or if it's the motor. Um, so what we can do is we can go window motor down and then I'm gonna click this start and it's turning down the passenger mirror that's uh, a window you probably heard that there so that we know that the motor is working we go window up hear it again there we go you might not have picked that up but the window has gone up there and uh, it, it allows you to test like so you know there we go we've passed we've tested the the motor there window down switch and it's testing the switch now so it knows that the switch is working fine if that makes sense we go window up switch as well just to turn it back up so you can do all sorts of little activation tests as well uh, to figure out what systems or what switches, what motors are and are not working within any particular module of the vehicle. Uh, but that's it guys, I hope it's uh, been useful for you. Like I say, use the link in the description below this video. It does work on a huge range of other makes and models as well. And it's highly recommended for anybody who wants to take care of their own vehicles um, or sort of look after their own fleet of, um, sort of vans, cars. Uh, if you're an enthusiast, if you're a small garage, a workshop, a mobile mechanic, you know, this tool would be very suitable for you. Okay, thanks for watching and I hope it helps.